Okay. So this week we are talking about strings um, and lists. This is strings are important in Python, and they're, one of the reasons they're important in Python is because Python assumes everything is a string unless you tell it otherwise. So you need to make sure that you know and are comfortable with how to change a string, how to create a string. What are the parameters around the string? How do you correct an error if there's some weird thing in your string? We're also going to talk a little bit about lists because a string is a list. It's a specific type of list, but it is a list. And all a list is is a collection of things. And for a string, it's a collection of characters. So we've got some new concepts got the concept of a string, and it's just the container for data. That's all it is. A list, which um, a container that you can have multiple data elements in. So that means you can have a list with lots of strings. You can have a list with a string and an int and a float. You can have anything you want in a list. And then slice, you're going to create a list from another list. There are two new keywords, del, which is D-E-L, and you can delete an element from a list, or you can delete the entire list. And the open and close square brackets, which indicates to Python that the type is a list. So last week we talked about strings, integers, and floats. This week we're adding a list type, so the square brackets. And here are some functions. And I pulled out these functions because you're going to need them in the labs. Split, which you're creating a list from a string. Replace, it creates a new string from an existing string while replacing characters in the process. Count, counts the number of times character appears in a string. Remove, you get rid of an element from a list. And format, you're going to create a new string from an existing string with format specifiers. So what is a string? A string is simply an ordered collection of characters surrounded by quotes. Could we please mute? Oh, can you hear me now? Okay. All righty. Hopefully you can hear me. Can anyone hear me? Okay, good. So we'll keep going. Thanks for letting me know, Nick. So a string is an ordered collection of characters. That's all it is. And it's immutable, which means it cannot be changed, which is weird because I said you could create a string from another string. And you can, but it's a new string that you're creating. It's not something that gets changed in place. It is a, Python makes a copy. And then while it's making the copy, it does whatever changes you want. So what does a string look like in Python? So I have a Python script. It's not, the script just has my stir, which is a variable, equals quote, this is a string, end quote. So this is what it looks like in computer RAM. Now notice there is a space for every character, and space is a character. So there is a space between this and is. So you're going to have a space there as that element in the list. Now, your parentheses, sorry, your quotes have to be balanced, which means 
you have to have an opening quote and a closing quote of the same type. So in this case, these are double quotes. You could have single quotes, but as long as you open with a single quote and close with a single quote, you should be fine. So what's not a string? Let's just see some errors. Okay, so this is a syntax error, and it's because it's got a missing close quote. This is a syntax error because it opens with a double quote and it closes with a single quote. So while you have quotes, they're not the same kind. And this is also a syntax error because you're opening with a double quote, you're trying to put a double quote in the middle of that, and then you're closing the double quote. And this is an error because Python is going to see that second double quote as the end of your string. And anything after it, it's going to say, sorry, can't help you, and it's going to give you a syntax error. So, so for every opening quote, you have to have a closing quote of the same type. So how do you correct those errors? You basically, if it's got a missing quote, you add a quote. If it's got an opening close, an open double and a closed single, you replace the closed single. And then if it has a quote inside of a quote, what you can do is you can either change it to a single quote or you can escape it. You escape it with a backslash and it will then treat it as a character. So the slash has a very specific meaning in Python and Java and other languages. And that means your, if it's inside of a string, you're telling that string to, for the next character, treat it as a character. So a quote is not treated as a character. A quote is treated as something special that denotes a string. So if you want to put a quote inside of a quote, you need to use the backslash. So um, let's look at ordered. What do I mean by ordered and how does Python keep an order? So what ordered means is that when I have a string, this is a string, what Python does is Without me doing anything, it provides us with a hidden index. And the index is just a number for every single character in the string. So remember I said a few minutes ago that a string is in fact a list. So because a string is a list, every element in the list has a corresponding number, which is called an index number. And that's how we store it as ordered because Python knows that t, the capital T is zero, the capital H is one, and so forth. So that's really what you get. And this is a picture of what's happening kind of in the computer memory. So the way you can read this is T is at index zero, H is at index one, I is at index 2, S is at index 3, and I could go on until 15, but I promise I won't. Every character of the string has a numerical placeholder. We're going to call it an index. So a list is an ordered collection. Well, let's do this. Let's go back to PyCharm for a minute. Okay. Let's go back to PyCharm. Or let's go into PyCharm. Where's my PyCharm? There's my PyCharm. And let me uh, to, I just want to see if I have a simple string here. So, uh, yeah, ignore all the other stuff. We'll look at that in a minute or a little bit later when we get into slicing and stuff. But right up here, I have a string, and I kind of wanted to show you what it looks like in PyCharm if you have a string issue. So if I do this, what you see PyCharm do is a couple of things. First of all, you get all that red squiggly stuff under the string. Secondly, up here, 
you, it will tell you where that one with an exclamation point is, that you have a problem. And the problem is that you have, let's see, configure inspection. No, that's not what I wanted. It will tell you, there we go, down here. What I did was I clicked on that, and when I did, it's a toggle, and it takes me to what's wrong. And in this case, it says, I have a missing close quote. So if you're in Zybooks and you're having trouble with a lab, you can copy it into PyCharm and then go look at what the actual issues are because PyCharm will tell you the best it can. Now, PyCharm is a program written by programmers. We're horrible when it comes to error messages. And also, it's hard with the interpreter to kind of sometimes tell where the issue is. But when it comes to quotes, it'll be pretty spot on. So I'm going to add my quote back in here. And I'm going to put a quote here. And again, this time it looks different. Now, if I go down here because I left the um, file, oh, file problems open, is it says, end of statement expected end of statement expected, missing closing quote. So what I have here is it's saying this is fine. There's no red squiggly under here. This is a problem. Where this starts, the problem is starting right here. And the problem is ending here because what it's expecting is it's expecting a quote. Now, you can't do this in Python. I couldn't just do something like this because, oh, it's going to let me. It shouldn't have let me. Uh, because that won't behave the way I want it to. That's the way I want it to behave. So those are just a couple of things to look for and use with PyCharm. PyCharm will, will is, is I'm just trying to say PyCharm is your friend. Ah, uh, here we go. So let's take a quick foray into list. And we're doing this on purpose because we need to understand lists before we can better understand strings. And because you're going to have to do a little stuff with lists this week. OK, so a list is an ordered collection of elements. Sounds really similar to a, um, to a string. And an element can be anything. And a list is mutable. Mutable means a list can be changed. And that's the difference, that's one of the differences between a list and a string. So let's take a look at what a list is in Python. So a list is, a list starts with an opening square bracket. It has some number of elements in it with commas in between them, and it ends with a closing square bracket. Now, if I look at my list as a representation inside the computer, it's going to have three elements, three boxes, 0, 1, and 2. And by the way, indexes in Python always start at 0. There is absolutely no way to change it. It can drive people crazy because it means it's kind of always one off from the length. So if your length is 16, your last index will be 15, and your first index will be 0, and that can be a little tricky for some people. But just like a string, a list has a corresponding index. So I have three values. My first, Lisa, is at index 0, 42 is at index 1, and 3.14 is at index 2. So let's look at the list format. A list starts with an opening square bracket and ends with a closing square bracket. It can have any number of elements in it. Each element has to be separated by a comma, and the elements do not have to be of the same type. Here I have a string Lisa, the number 42, and the float 3.14. I have three different data types within the list. And I can have lists within lists. And we'll see that 
in module six. But you can put anything you want inside of a list. It's it's very um, forgiving. So what can I do to a list? Well, I can do CRUD. CRUD is a common term, and it is create, read, update, and delete. Create means you're creating a new list. Read means you're accessing the data within a list. Update means you're modifying elements within a list. And delete means you're either removing an element from a list or removing the, the list entirely. So when you think about what you can do to a list, it's CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. Creating a list. Well, I can create a list in two ways. I can create an empty list, or I can create a populated list. The empty list simply has nothing in between the opening and closing square brackets. A populated list has stuff in the opening and closing square brackets. Could be one element, could be 100. Once you put a, a piece of data in that list, it is no longer considered empty. Read. I can get an a single element from a list. And I can do that by using a specific notation, a specific syntax in Python. And I do, I use that syntax and the index number associated with the element to get what I want. So let's say I want to get the first element in my list. So I am going to say my list, open square bracket, zero, close square bracket. And what this does is this has Python go into that list and get the value at index zero. And I can do the same thing again. I can do it for the last element in the list. My list, open square bracket, two, close square brackets, gets the last element in the list, and in this case, it will print it. So that is how you get, that is how you read from the list. You use the name of the list, square brackets, and the index number. So I can change a list. I can update it. So how do I do that? Well, I use that index number again. So here's my Python script. Again, I have three point, I have Lisa 42 and 3.14 in my list. But I'm going to print the first element in my list, which is 42. Now I'm going to change the first element in my list. I'm going to change it from 42 to 25. I do that by using that index again and that square bracket notation. I have my list, open square bracket, the number one, which is the second element in my list, close square bracket, equal 25. So with this line, I can use an element in the list like a variable. I can assign something to it. And that's what I've done in the third line of this code. I have said my list at index 1 is now going to be 25. And I will make it, and, and Python will make it 25 for me. So I have changed the list. So how do I, that changed it, how do I add something to it? How do I add something completely new? Well, I use a function called append. And what append does is it just adds something to the end of the list. So right now I have my, my favorite list, Lisa42 and 3.14. And now I'm going to do a dot append. Now this is a new notation. It's called the dot notation. And what this does is it says, hey, Python, what is to the left of the dot is the variable that I'm working on. So the way this can be read is Python. I want to append added to my list. And my list, I know it's my list because it's to the left-hand side of that dot. So the left-hand side of the dot has, it is the, the object, the thing you're working on. And the right-hand side of the dot is what you're going to do to it. 
In this case, I'm going to append something completely to the end of the list. And when I append, Python will add another index value. Not everything has a dot notation. So um, we have to be careful. There are in the list, you can use a dot notation. Some things you can and some things you can't, and you just have to be careful. And we'll go through what you can use during the class. Now, I can also delete. I can use del to remove an element from the list, or I can completely obliterate the list. So, got my favorite list again. Now I'm using the del keyword, and I say del my list at index 0. And what is that is going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to remove Lisa from the list. And it's going to move, it's going to, sorry, it's going to renumber the list. So the first element will now be 42, and the second element will be 3.14, and the total length of the list is 2. So that is how you use the del keyword to remove something from a list. And again, you're using the square bracket notation. There was no need to use dot notation here. We just used that new keyword, del. All right, so I want to delete by value because maybe I don't want 42 in the list, but I don't know where it is in the list. So what can I do? Well, I can use a function called remove. Remove, again, uses the dot notation, like append. And what it does is it says, Python, go out and find the value 42 and remove it from my list. So my list is the thing that you're going to change. Remove is the action that you're taking. And then 42 is the value. Now, remove, like append, is a function call. And that function call, again, has to have opening and closing parentheses. So append was a, a new function. Remove is a new function. And that's what you can do with the dot notation. The function is always on the right, and the thing you're trying to modify is always on the left. OK, so I got a little file here called crud.py. Because I didn't like what they did. So this is basically just a script that does what we did and plus a few other things. So I have, let me move this over. I don't need it that big. I create an empty list. Then I create my favorite list here. And then I print out everything. Now you'll notice that when I print out what's at, element 1, and what's at element 2, I use stir. And that's because I have a string here. This is an integer. This is a float. Even if it comes out of a list, I've still got to make sure that I cast it properly, that I, that I convert it properly, not cast it. So let's run through this really quick. And we're going to debug it. For those who weren't here last week, the debugger is my favorite thing in the world when I program. And that's because what it does is it tells me what is happening at the moment in my code. And for me, when I'm writing really complex code, that really helps when I have like a logic issue. So what I have here is I have a red dot. That red dot is called a breakpoint. And what that tells PyCharm is when you find a red dot, stop. Don't go any further, but specifically don't execute that line of code yet. I want you to stop before you execute it. So I know what line I'm about to execute because of this dark blue line in PyCharm. Now, if I look down here, if I look at the bottom of the screen, I'm on the debugger tab, and I have these wonderful little things over here which tells me what my variables are and what their current value is. So I have something called my empty list and I know that it's an empty list because it says list which is the type colon zero which is the length. So if I print empty list, I'll go back to the console 
And that's all you'll see, just the opening and closing square brackets. So I've created my list. I can see that I've created my list here. Whoops. And then I'm going to print my list of zero, my list of one, but I had to convert it to a string, and my list of two. Now I'm going to change my list, and I'm going to make it 25 for one. The nice thing here is I can go over in the debugger and say that that worked. I have 25 now for my second element. I'm going to print, go to the console. I just printed everything. I'm going to append the word add. Go back to the debugger and I've appended the word add. I'm going to pop. Pop is one that we haven't talked about. You don't have to use it, but what pop does is it gets rid of the first element in the list. Sorry, it gets rid of the last element. FIFO, not LIFO, sorry. Got rid of the last element in the list. I was using stuff today that got rid of the first element in the list by using pop. So I apologize for that. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, it was pop one. It wasn't just pop. It was pop one. So it popped the element, the second element. So I apologize. I wasn't reading my own code right. So if I print the list, I'm not going to have... 25 because I got rid of 25 because I popped one. And then I'm going to remove the word add. Here's an example of that dot notation again. So I went out, I removed the word add. So now I only have two elements in my list and I'm going to print it. So this is an example and if you're kind of wondering, you know, for an example of update, there's one, there's a working example of it. Now, just to remind us about type, I can, I can make this program be very unhappy by just removing this stir. So, actually, let me see what happens when I run it. Maybe it doesn't. Nope, there it is. Okay, so I did not get any red squiggles here. So syntactically, this is correct, but it is a logic error. The logic error is can only concatenate stir, not int to stir. So the plus here is what's called concatenation. It takes two strings and butts them up against each other to make one string in the print statement. But I can only do that with strings, just like I can only add an integer to an integer or an integer to a float or a float to a float. I cannot do arithmetic with a string. But I can use the plus sign with a string, and it just means something different. It means that I'm going to take one string, and I'm going to add it to the other and create a brand new string with it. But I can't do that with different types. I can only do it with two strings. So that's why I got this error, because I took out stir. Because this makes that logic error go away. And now it will work right. So I showed you before about some syntax errors. This is not a syntax error. This is an error that you will only get when you try and run it. So oops, how are we for questions? Okie dokie. Here we go. So why did we talk about lists? A string is a list that cannot be modified. So we know a little bit more about lists now, and we can work with that to talk a little bit more about strings. So what do I do if I want to change a string? I create a copy, and I modify the string on creation, kind of. Python gives me functions that I can use to do that. Um, and CRUD kind of, still kind of applies. You can create it, you can read it, you can delete it, and you can modify a string by creating a new string, which is a little odd, but that's kind of an update, but it's the best we have for strings. So, an I just like I could create an empty list, I can create an empty string. An empty string is just quote, followed by an opening quote, followed by a close quote. A populated string is what we've seen before. Excuse me. Um, an opening quote characters, numbers, whatever, 
and then ending in a closing quote. All right, I can read a string just like I could read a list. I use the bracket notation, and if I want to say, this is myster, this is the value as it appears in the computer memory, and if I say myster of zero, it's going to print a capital T. If I say myster at 10, it's going to create, it's going to print a capital S. Now I can do some fun things with strings, like slicing and joining, and there's a bunch of stuff about slicing um, in uh, Zybooks. It goes through a complete set of examples. So I can create a new string from an existing string by slicing. And what the slicing does is it's going to go out and it's going to say starting at index 10, to index 13 minus 1. So the first number is inclusive and the last number is, is not inclusive. So 10 to 13 will get me three characters. It'll get me, in this case, the capital S, lowercase t, and lowercase r. And what Python does is it carves out a brand new memory space. It puts str in that memory space and it, sets, it assigns it to the variable on the left hand side. So if I'm going to use string slicing, I pretty much have to remember that I've got to assign it to a variable or use it in a print statement immediately. So it creates something new. It creates a new string value and that string value needs to be put someplace. And in this place it's called my new stir. So you want to use the slicing on the right hand side of a single equal sign and a variable on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. Um, yeah, when slicing, the start index is inclusive, the end index is not. So here's some strings methods. So first index, so the find function will get me the character, the first, the, sorry, let me start again. The find function will get me the index number of the first occurrence of, in this case, S. So I'm using that dot notation here. So I have the function find, find takes a string, and that's what you put inside the parentheses, to the left-hand side of the dot, of, of, of find, you'll have the name of the string you are trying to get S from. You're trying to get the index for S from. And this will always return an integer, not a string. So let's say I want to replace the portion of a string. I want to replace this with that. And so what I use is I use the replace function. The replace function takes two arguments. It takes the first argument, which is what do you want to replace in the string? And it's got to be a string. And the, right, the, the second argument for replace is what do I want to replace it with? So what's the old stuff and what's the new stuff? Replace again uses the dot notation, so it is going. You're going to replace something in Meister. Meister is the object. Replace is the action. And then I'm going to count the number of occurrences of a character in the string. So in this case, I'm going to use the count function. The count function takes a string as an argument. And what I'm going to get back is an integer. And that integer tells me how many occurrences there are, in this case, of the letter i in my stir. Count again uses the dot notation. And so I am counting i from my stir. And I'm going to set that, I'm going to set that into a variable that I've called num. Uh, 
you will need to, I believe, use all three of these in the labs. I can't remember if you're going to use replace, but I know that you're going to use count. So we've talked a little bit about string slicing. Now we're going to talk about splitting and joining strings. Because when I'm using the input function, which we'll, we're going to use for the rest of the class, what I input is always considered a string. So how do I turn a string into a list if I really do want it to be a list? Well, what I do is I use a function called split. And this function, again, uses the dot notation. And what I'm doing is I'm telling Python, take this string and split it on a character. Oftentimes the character is a comma, but it could be a space, it could be a colon, it could be all kinds of things. And give me a list back. I don't want another string, I want a list. And it will be a list of strings, even if there are integers in it. You would have to do that conversion yourself. But it is a list of strings. So here I have Meister equals, open quote, first comma second close quote. The next line is my list equals my stir dot split, and I'm splitting on a comma. And what this does is it gives me a list back with two words, first and second. First is the first element in the list, and second is the second element in the list. I can also go the other way. I can join. So I can take a list, and I can use the join function. Now, the join function has to happen on a string. So what you'll often see is an empty string, which is just an open close and a clo close quote, dot join my list. So what that does is it says take this string, which is the empty string, and take all the elements in my list and make a single string out of them. And you'll notice this doesn't have a space in it. And that's because join doesn't automatically assume you want a space or a comma or anything else. So let's go and look at a little code. Um, OK. So let me see. Um, wait a minute. No. We want to see if there's a challenge out here. No, but we will do this for the formatted one. Okay. We're just going to do a uh, split. Okay. So this is some examples of how to use split and how to use join. Come on. So I've got my first and second example up here. I've also got an, an example with social security numbers. So we can do, we can split social security number using a dash. And we can also join them. Now if I wanted to join them using a dash, I would simply use it against a string that has the dash because what can be in the join quote in the quotes before the join is the separator you want to use so I could put a space in there I could do lots of stuff and then there are um, looking at the parts so let's run through this real quick Does anybody have any questions no okay um, again I have my breakpoints I like the debugger so we're going to go through this, and I haven't done anything yet, so there's name error. Mine is not defined, and that's just here because I haven't done anything. So I have first and second is a string, and then I'm going to split it, and when I split it, my list is first and second. And now I'm going to join it, and I get a new string with first and second. And I'm just going to, whoops, 
print it out. And now I'm going to join it with commas. Same. My new stir now has commas. Let's go look at the console when I print it out. Now I've got my social security number and I'm going to split it based on a dash. So I get a new list. Now these are strings again. If you wanted to use them as integers, you'd have to convert them. Now I'm going to put them back together. Um, I also have the parts. So I have printed the length of a part. Now I'm going to print the first part of the Social Security, the second part, and the third part. I've got a separator. I'm going to join the parts with a dash. And um, I forgot to print it out. So this is an example, working example, of how to do some splits and joins. And you might need to l understand how to do the split at minimum in the labs. And I think you have to use a join as well. Okie dokie. Um, string formatting. So string formatting um, is very handy. And it helps with readability for your code. And you can do what's called parameterized string formatting. So this is another instance of the dot notation. In this case, we're using a function called format. Format is going to positionally replace squiggly brackets in your string with stuff. So in this case, I have a print statement, and that print statement has three placeholders. A placeholder for a format function is an open curly brace and a closing curly brace. That's the minimum. So every time Python, using the format function, sees a curly brace, it's going to try and replace it with something. The middle one has something that will change the format of what it is you're looking at. And in this case, it's colon dot 2 F, which says, hey, Python, expect a float. That's where the F comes in. Give me two decimal places after the float only. Now, the format is positional. So the first parameter from the format function will always replace the first set of curly braces. The second parameter in the format function will always replace the second and the third, the third, and so on. Um, that does mean if you've got this special format specifier inside the curly braces, you better have the type that's expecting or it's going to give you a runtime error. This is something that um, PyCharm won't catch, Zybooks won't catch until you try and print it out, and then you'll get an exception. So what's the next one? Okay, we'll go through this, and then we'll look at the code. So here's an example. I have number num 1 is 42, pi is 3.14159, and my stir is pi day. So what's going to happen if I use that format function it's going to take num and it's going to put it in the first one. It's going to take pi and put it in the second one. And it's going to take myster and put it in the third one. And when the printout happens, it will say, I'm 42 and it's 3.14 pi day. Now, the reason it said 3.14 was specifically because of that colon dot 2 F inside that middle squiggly brace. Now, Here's an example of what not to do. Num1 is 42. Pi is 3.14, same as before. This time, the only thing I've done is I have, I have changed my stir for pi. And what I will do is I will get an error. So 
it has to match the type of variable. All right, so let's go out and look at, which one did I just see? That one. Okay, so this is challenge 2.7.1. And for those of you who were not here last week, if you don't know it, um, you don't have to do the challenges. The challenges are non-graded activities. So I encourage you strongly to do the challenges, but they're not graded, so you do not have to do them. So I'm going to have user word, user number, and user flow. And I'm going to input them all, and you'll notice that I need to convert them. So let's just run through this real quick. Okay, I don't know why it keeps doing that. I did something wrong. All right, so I'm going to input a word, and it's going to be, I should say, happy. And I'm going to input a number, 42, and I'm going to input a float, and that float's going to be 3.1415. So, oh, wait a minute. My bad. I'm sitting here typing and I haven't even told it to go. So that's going to be 42. Let's do this again. Sorry. It was waiting for me to, to, to um, step over the function. So here are the three things that I have. I have happy, 42, and 3.14. Another nice thing about PyCharm. It will always tell you the current value of the variable that you're looking at. So it's very helpful because if you think it should be a different variable, then somewhere there's a log uh, sorry, a different value, then somewhere there is a logic error. So I am now done the first one, console, which is uh, an, a pair of squiggly braces, comma, another pair of, of curly braces, dot format, user word, user number, and now I'm going to do it again, and I, but this time I added the user word, user number, and user float, and now I am swapping those two, and when I swap them, I get this big, long, nasty looking thing here. This is an exception, and it is basically telling you that you've done something wrong. What this is saying is unknown format code F for object of type stir. Because what changed between line 6 and line 7 is that I changed the order from user, um, sorry, I went user float, user number, user word. So I went from having a string, an integer, and a float to having a float, an integer, and a string. And because this second one, sorry, because this third one was not a float, um, PyCharm basically blew up at me and said, sorry, you can't do that. So when you get these types of traceback messages, start at the bottom, always start at the bottom, and then read what it says, and then look at the next line up, and look at one more line up from that, and it will tell you where it thought the problem was. And the nice thing is, if I click on this, it is a link into the program and will take me to that line. Okay, so some lab notes. Let's talk a little bit about the labs. Okay. These are a bit longer than module one. You have to manipulate strings. You're going to have to use the functions count and split. Um, both use the dot notation, so go back and review those if you're not 100% certain. Um, that means the syntax uses a dot between the string and the function. Um, and I said this last week. I'm probably going to say it a lot. Zybooks tests your labs with different values than the ones provided in the example. The example is just to give you an idea of what it is they're going to do. 
So you have to work with all the information Zybooks provides to interact with the program. So if Zybooks is saying input ABC, it's going to input ABC, well, that means you're going to need an input function call not to put, uh, uh, the, very, not to put the value of a variable to ABC. We're going to conduct these reviews using flowcharts. Flowcharts are language agnostic, which means they don't reflect line for line exactly what you would do in a Python script, but they give you the general flow of how the program should go. So, Lab 2.12. I will say this, and this will be the only time I say it. Um, we don't give you enough information to do Lab 2.12. I don't give away answers, but in this case I have. The solution to Lab 2.12 is will be in, uh, linked in the description because we are asking you to use stuff that you have to know from next week which is how to do if statements. They do a very small thing on if and then expect you to be able to do it in a lab, and I just think that's wrong. So um, lab two, we're going to go over lab 2.12, but if you determine that you need the solution, the solution is there. So what lab 2.12 says is you can format people's names in a lot of different ways. So there's going to be... Um, an input, which is first name, middle name, last name, and then you're going to output last name, comma, first initial, dot, middle initial. Well, that would be fine, except for the fact that they're changing the input form on you, which is ridiculous. This is the ridiculous part. So they may only have two things instead of three things. So if it's two things, then you're just going to put out last name, comma, first initial, period. So um, that's why I, I, I put the solution because of that second part because you haven't learned how to do if statements yet. We have an entire module starting next week on branching. They, I cannot expect any student to understand this and get this one right if they haven't programmed before. Okay, so here is the logic for 2.12. We're going to declare a variable named name, and we're going to input last name, comma, first name, and middle name into name. So somebody's going to type in first name, last name, first name, middle name, or last name, first name, whichever, and it's going to basically be put into the variable called name. So you're going to use an input statement. We're going to declare something called a name list, and we're going to split name into name list using a space delimiter, because remember, in the problem statement, it showed spaces in between those names. Now you have to do this if length of name list is greater than two. If it's greater than two, then we go and we're going to put in, we're going to have we're going to use one of those print.formats, and we're going to say name underscore list of zero. And now we get to do even more fun stuff because we have to do um, a list inside of a list to get the next piece of information. And it's name underscore list of one, of zero, and then name underscore list, name list underscore two of zero to get the first initials. If not, then we go and we just output the last name, comma, the first initial. So that's why I give you the answer to lab 2.12. Lab 2.13, I do not give you the answer to. So well, here's where you're going to have to use some splits, and we're going to have to use count. So you're going to have a program whose input is a string which contains a character and a phrase, and whose output indicates the number of times the character appears in the phrase. So you're going to have the very first character, and you're going to have the whole phrase. So you're going to, you're going to create a variable called myster. You're going to input myster, and then you're going to declare myList, and you're going to split myster into myList. Then you're going to declare the 
a variable called care count, and then you're going to use the count function on that list. So remember, this is the dot notation. So it'd be my list dot count, and then give the char the, that character that was put in at the very beginning of the input, which would be in your it would be my list of zero would be what you're counting for, and my list of one is what you're counting on. And then we're going to output the care count, and we're going to be done. Lab 2.14 is a little longer and a little more complex. So the user is going to enter two words and a number, and each of these are going to be stored in separate variables, which means Python is expecting you to have three variables and three input statements. And then, um, then output those three values on a single line separated by a space. That's not difficult. And then output two passwords using a combination of the user input. So the first one is going to be um, you're going to do the two words with an underscore in between them. So this is primary, prime for um, a format using the dot format function. And the next one is going to be the number, the first word, and the number again. Again, perfect for using the dot format. And then you're going to output the length of each password. So I recommend that you create the password and set it to set it into a variable. So you create a variable password one and a variable password two. And then you just use the len function and you print out the length. So here's the basic flow. I'm going to declare word one, word two, and num. So I'm declaring three variables. Then I'm going to input. I'm going to use input functions to get Zybooks, see what Zybooks is sending in. I'm going to declare password 1, declare password 2. Then I'm going to do my assignment. I'm going to set password 1 to num word 1 num and password 2 to word 1 underscore word 2. Oh, I think those are flipped. And I'm going to output password 1 and output password 2, and I'm going to output the length of each one, and I'm going to be done. So this will be the longest lab. but I believe that it's doable with everything we've talked about tonight. So are there any questions? Going once, going twice. I'll stop the recording and um,